Why did you keep getting these positions and not anybody else around you? I had an incredible work ethic. I used to get up at five o'clock, get to work by six and go home, you know, at eight, nine o'clock. I didn't, you know, it's like, I just worked. I love working. I mean, the bottom line is you gotta be good at something. How did you move up? I mean, what, what was it about you that people saw that they kept wanting to put you in positions that allowed you to grow and stretch? Because, you know, surely you were around a lot of other smart people. Um, yeah. And, you know, when there, when there was a position that was open for a chief marketing officer, they probably considered a lot of people, not just you. Yeah. Why did you keep getting these positions and not anybody else around you? I think uh, the, the biggest separator for me was my uh, ability to influence and, and motivate people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was always able to, you know, when you get your first job, you got to sell somebody that you have the capability to, to, to build the experience to be successful at it. Did you know that 96% of the people who watch videos on this channel are not subscribed? That's pretty crazy, right? Make sure that you hit subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get notified when more videos just like this one are released. When, when you get your next job, you know, you've got to <laughs> you've, you've got to do your first job really well, okay? And then as you've done it, you've got to build relationships and, and, and belief in other people so that they'll take a, take a shot and give you the opportunity to move to the next, next thing. And yeah. I, I think I had an incredible work ethic. I mean, I used to get up at 5 o'clock, get to work by 6, and go home, you know, at eight, nine o'clock. I didn't, you know, it's like, I just worked. I love working. I never right. felt like I was working, but it was like, cause I loved what I was doing. It was, it was always my hobby. I think the fact that I got in an area that I really loved and was really good at it. I was very good at marketing and advertising. I mean, the bottom line is you got to be good at something. I, my basic functional skill was really, really good. And I worked really hard at getting better and better at it because I loved it. And then I, I always believed in managing two up and two down. I think you got to manage the person that you work for and the person that he or she works for, okay? And anytime you get in with that person that's two up, you need to talk to them about what you would do if you had their job. You give them some ideas on what you would do, uh, what they could do to be more effective. So I never ever went into those situations without thinking about how I could impress that person that I had capability, that I had more potential. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think as a result of that, people put me into big spots earlier than, than you, you might think. And I managed two down too. I always felt like I needed to manage the people that work for me really well. So they really loved working for me. And then I used, tried to go to the front line and learn what was going on there yeah. so that I could, uh, you know, uh, take that to, to, to bear as well. So, you know, I think that's the, th those, that's probably the reason why I, I, I move forward. It's people saw potential because I never really looked at myself in the job mm -hmm. I was in. I always acted like I had the capability and wanted to have the next job, but I didn't do it in an overly zealous kind of way. Yeah, I love that. Uh, well, did you ever make mistakes during this process? Um, oh, and, my and, God. Like, what, was, <laughs> what was the biggest mistake that you made? Did you ever cost the company millions of dollars? My biggest uh, failure at PepsiCo, uh, at Pepsi, when I was running marketing at Pepsi, was Crystal Pepsi, which I've talked about many, many times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I was the inventor of uh, Crystal Pepsi, uh, which was a clear Pepsi, launched in 1992. I remember it that. Biggest, I, it, it was the biggest idea I thought I ever had in my life. Um, but we, uh, it didn't taste enough like Pepsi, didn't have enough Pepsi notes to it. And so it became a gigantic in and out product. So the big failure was there was not that, not that uh, uh, we didn't make money on it. We did because the Pepsi-Cola bottlers priced it at a premium because they didn't think it'd have a lot of repeat. Okay, <laughs> so they, everybody made a lot of money, and they were right. And the reason they told me that it was not going to do well because it didn't taste enough like Pepsi, and we were calling it Crystal Pepsi. But I didn't listen to them. I was a heat-seeking missile. This had gotten great rave reviews. Product of the year that year, 1992, you know, it was like this was going to be the rage in 1993, was featured on CBS Sunday News, 
you know, evening news by Dan Rather. You know, it was like a home run idea. And I, I was just, I thought that everybody didn't really get how great an idea it was. And it was a great idea. Everybody tried it, but they didn't come back and try it again because it didn't taste enough like Pepsi. Yeah. And, but we made a ton of money on it. Okay, because it was premium price. So that was probably the reason why I didn't get fired there. Um, Interesting. And we did some other good things too. But, you know, that was, uh, yeah, I had some I had some failures along the way. Um, 